Hi guys, it's Cal from Dirty Weasel. Welcome back to the mod organizer for Fallout 3 series. In the first episode, we got you up and running with prepping your game for modding. Installed mod organizer, covered its basic features, and downloaded our first mod. Here in episode 2, we will briefly talk about archive and validation, instruct the now former users of Nexus Mod Manager on where to place their old mods, cover some basic any file tweaks, and then download some mods that will fix a whole bunch of stuff in the game. Let's head over to the desktop and get started. Okay guys, so before we get started I want to talk about something I noticed in the video when I was reviewing it from episode 1. And that had to do with automatic archive and validation. And back in the old days when we were modifying our games just by putting in everything in the data files, we had to have a mod called Automatic Archive Invalidator Invalidated. Whatever, you get the idea. So, Nexus Mod Manager and Mod Organizer have that covered for you. It automatically does it. And when you open up Mod Organizer, you'll see under Profiles, we have Dirty Weasel, Automatic Archive and Validation. Okay. We have it on both, so we always make sure we make a new copy. It's already manually checked. So that's done. And what I noticed in the video is that Archives, and right here, I saw this. Okay. And these actually need to be checked. If you want Mod Organizer to manage these things, you need to have them checked. And this way, all your textures and stuff will load correctly. And then I noticed one more thing. This Fallout Invalidation.bsa, it is in the wrong place. It needs to be up here. It needs to be at the very top so that it loads before these other things do. So this needs to be at the top. Well, I thought, well, we'll just... We'll just well, why, why won't it drag? Why isn't it dragging? Okay. Because it, it, it's not moving. So you can either do something like this. Move them all at the top like that. Okay. And you're, you're kind of back to where it needs to be. Because you basically just slid everything down. There's another way of doing that. And I want you to go ahead and go over to your work configure settings and workarounds. Click that. I want you to go over to workarounds. If you ever need to move stuff around that's grayed out, I want you to uncheck force enable games. Hit OK. You still can't move it, but close it down. Reopen it back up. Go into your archives. You can see now you can move it. Okay. There's that. So if you ever need to move things around in this, uncheck this box right here. Force enable game files. It'll allow you to now make them all blacked out, no, all blacked and no grayed out, and then you can move it. So once you're done moving it though, you need to recheck it, hit OK, close Mod Organizer, open it back up, come to the archive, see it's grayed out now. But it's in, up at the top, and that's what we needed. Okay, so there's that. This next note is for you Nexus Mod Manager users. Remember we had, in Episode 1, I told you to Take all your mods out of that directory and drop them into a temporary file. In my case, I just named it FO3Mods. I put it on my desktop so I could find it later. And these are all your mods. Obviously, this is an abbreviated version. I just did this for testing so you could see it. So what do we do with these now? I want you to go ahead and go into your, where is it? Into your downloads, wherever you kept your downloads. All right? For me, that's in my dump drive under a file called Mod Organizer. And remember, we set this up in episode one, Fallout 3 downloads. You can see there's that first mod that we downloaded and installed one tweak. We did that, which open up this file again. And you can either do it that way and highlight them all, or you can control A and do them all. I want you to just drag and drop them. Boom. It's going to take a second. And uh, yeah, I don't know, copy and replace. Uh, don't copy that one. All right, so it was in there, right? But now you don't need it because one tweak was in here and now it's in here. So you didn't need to do that. But everything else is in here now. So now you can close these down and you can actually get rid of Fallout 3 mods. Oh, stop. Just get up there. All right, now when you open up, excuse me, Mod Organizer, hit Downloads, there's all these things. You'll need to go through and query the info and then look and say, this is uh, part two of two. You know, just know what you're getting into. Cancel that. Let's do, how about this one? This is an easy one. 
query info and it fetches it up and it does it on its own. You don't need to go through and find all the right stuff. This way you have the right versions. And basically it just has to do with the, the mod name so that when you go ahead and download to install, you can just go ahead and do it you know, manually. It's just a test here. So I did a directory there. Done. Okay. All right. So now you have them in your downloads file. If you ever want to hide something, say I want to hide one tweak from my downloads file, just right click, remove from view. Do not delete it. Do not delete it. Hit remove from view. And it's now shown, it's not no longer seen. If you show, come down here to show hidden, hit that box, and I'll be back. All right, these are all your hidden mods in addition to the ones you haven't installed. All right, you can see it's installed, double click to reinstall. I don't need to do that, so I just hide it. It's not my work list. If you want to delete it completely from your downloads file, just hit delete, and it'll actually delete it from that downloads file that we have set up on my dump drive. All right. So there's that, you know, now our Nexus Mod Manager friends are all caught up. All right, guys, we're going to talk about any tweaks now. You know, we have Mod Organizer up. As I've talked about before, if you ever want to change any of the any files to affect your game, you're going to need to change it into Mod Organizer. And you come over here to the any editor right here, and you pull up your any editor. And you have two versions. You have the fallout.any and the falloutprefs.any, and they are unique. And uh, we're going to make your changes in this so that every time you run Mod Organizer and you run the game through Mod Organizer using FOSE, it will run these changes. So we need to change these in this file here to make those changes. So I have a quick little notepad right next to it. And these are just my notes so I can easily so show you the changes. So the first one we're going to talk about is BU's Threaded AI, and what this does is basically allows the game to use more threads, you know, to make use of these better quad-core processors. So what we're going to do is look for BU's Threaded AI in the any tweaks. So we go ahead and hit Control F, and that's going to open up our search window. And I would suggest just go ahead and highlight this. I'll ahead include notes in the description for this stuff, but this is the best way to do it. So Paste that in and find next. And you can see it, it's down here, be used threaded AI. We can go ahead and close that now. Let's scroll down a little bit more so we can see it clearly. And you can see it right now it's set to zero. We want to change that to one. All right? So be used threaded AI equals one. Now the next instruction I'm going to give you is to hit enter and add a new line. And you've got a line right there. I'm going to give you the line right here. Add an extra line and type inum hw threads equal to. So I'm just going to go ahead and highlight this, copy it, and paste it in. Boom, done. Hit save. All right now, the number of threads it can use is two. You can reduce that down to one, but it's not as stable. So, like I said, quick quick fixes for you guys. So the next thing we're going to do is bload face gen head egtf files equals one allows facial morphs from mods to work correctly. So if you decide to add mods that change the faces later on we're going to need to do that. Now this is not in this file. It is not in the in any file. You need to add this in. And I'm going to put it with the other faces in here. There we go. Face gen texturing. I'm going to add it right there. You can probably add this anywhere. It's not going to make a big change in any of this stuff, but it's just a command to allow this stuff in. So I'm actually going to highlight the whole thing to remind myself what this is. So I'm going to highlight the whole thing. I'm going to copy it, and I'm going to paste it in. Paste. And hit save again. Right? That little uh, semicolon right there will prevent that from actually running this line, but at least you know what it is now. So the next thing we're going to do, we're just going to talk about mouse acceleration. Mouse acceleration is that, it, that annoying little thing that uh, mice do with Microsoft, that when you move it slowly, it moves at a very constant pace. You move it quickly, it accelerates to go even faster than what you've moved the mouse across the screen. It's really good when you're moving around doing things in your desktop. It's not so good when you're playing a first-person shooter because suddenly your aims are going to be off depending on how fast you move the mouse. 
what we're going to go down is we're going to scroll down to controls. And you could either do the search like this, but I'm just going to scroll down for ease of use. And we are going to find controls. There they are right now. So I'm going to go ahead and add a line in. And I want you to copy all this in. And you see the semicolon is there again. Just copy and paste it in. So this is the remove mouse controls. It has a semicolon in front of it, so it's not actually going to do anything there. You see, with copying these over, make sure they go all the way to the end. In the process of copying these all in, it didn't uh, move them over. So that's how you want it. So there you go. That is fixed, and hit save again. And that's the any tweaks. There are a lot more any tweaks that you can do. But I'm going to leave those for a different time. Remember, this video is about fixing things. And we're just fixing stuff right now. We can talk about any any uh, later. Okay, now we're ready to start downloading some mods to improve the stability and performance of our game. But I want to show you something first. I just got word from a member over the STEP project. You know, that's the Skyrim Total Handsome project. And the one of the moderators over there by the name of Kelmich has a guide for Fallout 3, and he has graciously allowed me to show parts of these, this guide in our videos. And I'll be referring to this off and on so that you can see some more advanced instructions, and there's a lot of good information here. I mean, just pages and pages and pages and pages and pages of stuff. And I think it's worthwhile having all of this available to us as modders since it's a one-stop shopping for a lot of different things. You can see it's it's been updated, you know, fairly recently. He's doing lots of updates recently and a lot of good information there. So, let's go ahead and go to our first mod that we'll be downloading. And it's called Large Address Aware Enabler for Fallout 3. Fallout 3, being that it's an older game, only initially enabled it to use 2 gigabytes of RAM. Well, you know, with most of us having much more than that now, some, you know, at the bare minimum, most people have 4. You know, it'd be nice to use some more of that RAM. And what this does is allow you to do it. What you're basically can go through and read this. And the highlights are basically this, is that it's going to inject a script into the .exe, you know, the fallout.exe, that allows it to use more RAM. Now, if you're using a 32-bit version, it's only going to give you 3 gigabytes of RAM. If you're using a 64-bit version, you're going to get 4. So what you're going to do is come up to the files and you can see it's Fallout 3 Gigabyte Enabler and you're going to download it manually. All right, now I already have it downloaded manually. And what we're going to do is open up and take a look at it. It's a, you know, a WinRAR file. When we talked about this before, have WinRAR 7-zip. You can have that done. So I want you to go ahead, open that up, and then pull it out and set it on your desktop. And we can throw away the executable. We won't be really saving this and or putting this in the mod organizer. It's just a set of programs that will run an executable to add that line to allow it to use more RAM. So, what are we going to do? Well, we need to do a few things first. And we are going to go ahead and open up our Fallout 3, Fallout 3 file right here. And... What you're going to do first is we're going to be modifying this file, but I don't want you to have a you know modified file all by itself. We want to have a backup just in case something goes horribly wrong. So I want you to go ahead and right click and then add a new folder. Now, however you name this is up to you, but I want you to go ahead. I'm just going to do Fallout EXE Backup. Okay. I want you to go ahead and open that up, and you see nothing's in it. So you're going to highlight this. This is the fallout3.exe. Remember we told you to enable the extensions on this. You can look how to do that up. Look up how to do that. I want you to right-click. I want you to copy. Then I want you to go up to your fallout. I actually named it fallout. Let me rename that real fast. There we go. That's appropriate now. Open that up and paste that in. Now that is a basic vanilla .exe so you have it for save. Now come down here and you're going to highlight again. I would just go ahead and cut it 
and paste it into now three gigabyte enabler on this side. Paste it in there. See, now it's taken it out of here and put it over here. That way, when you put it back in, it's not going to do anything strange. Now, what you're going to do with this, don't worry about any of these files. Just, it's part of the exec executable. You can read the text and tell you what it's going to do, but I'm going to show you how to do it right now. So, down here you have start.bat. You're going to double click on that. It'll ask you if you want to run it. No, I don't want you to ask me that all the time. And run it. And you're going to end up with a little pop up window right over here. This will allow Fallout3.exe to use more than 2 gigabytes of addressable space. Make a backup of your original Fallout 3 exec. We did that. We put it into our Fallout exec backup over here. Please make sure the Fallout 3 exec has been copied to this folder. Press any key to enable. So we've got it appropriately set over here. Press any key. Boom. Choose what to do with the large address header. Choose A to add, R to remove, U, V, I guess that's a V, to view current header, or D for directions. We'll just skip all this other stuff, and we're just going to press A to add it. It'll run a little program. Large address aware has been enabled. Press any key to continue. Boom. And it's presented with this menu again. We're going to, we're all done with this. We're going to press E to exit. Done. Now we can go ahead and highlight it. And we'll just drag it and drop it, a new copy over there. This is a one time use. If I were you, I would just go ahead, take that file, and throw it away. Unless you plan on redoing this at any time, you know, it's probably not worth saving it. Just, just get rid of it. So, what that's done is now put in that executable to run more gigabytes of RAM. It's not going to change anything in Mod Organizer. It will still, when you have your executables, Fallout 3, it's still going to point to the same location. Right? So we don't need to modify in it. It knows where it is. It's just going to run it. So if you were to run FOSE, it would refer back to Fallout.exe and run the game. But with more RAM and stability. That's a good thing. So we can go ahead and just minimize this down. Close that. And we're ready to move on to our next thing. Next one up is the updated Fallout 3 patch. This is the unofficial patch. It's, it's not done by Bethesda. It's done by a collection of modders. In this case, Benoit and Harry Legs. And by the way, it's mod 19122. But I'll leave all the links down in the description for you to find this. And you can see what it does. It's a huge number of fixes for the FO3 and DLC ESMs. As simple as that. It requires Fallout 3, Anchorage at ESM, the Pit, Broken Steel, Point Lookout, and Zeta. And we told you that you need to have all the DLCs because most people are requiring it. So we'll go ahead and, you know, go through the installation. Mod Organizer is a little bit different. Prefer Load Order, it's going to go right after Zeta and how to install it, all these changes. And we're talking about a ton of changes. You can scroll down this thing. All these are bug fixes. They need to be done that Bethesda didn't do. So this is going to be the right way to do it. So, when you come into Files, you're going to see a couple different things. This is the updated unofficial Fallout 3 patch. Do not do this. This is an executable uh, program that will download it and insert it into your data files. That's not what we want. We want the updated unofficial Fallout 3 patch mod manager version. This is the one we want right here. And basically, this is the one that's going to insert it into your game using a mod manager like Nexus Mod Manager or Mod Organizer. So, hit Download with Manager. I've already done that. And it's in my Mod Organizer. Unofficial, you can see under here, Downloads tab. You have Plugins, Downloads. This is where it will be once you download it into your using the manager. Okay. So, we're going to double click. And we're going to hit Manual. And you'll see up here at the top, the data directory is not on the top level. So highlight it, right click it, set data directory. And it's going to add all this stuff. Okay, and you're going to have a BSA and an ESM. It looks good. Go ahead and click OK. It's going to take a second. And it's done. I'm going to click to activate it. So I just unclicked it. Click to activate it. And we're going to move it up. I always like my patches above my FOSE stuff. So there's that. You can see 
under conflicts, it's now making a bunch of changes here. And that's fine. You know, conflicts are part of what mods do. They change files. And that's all it's going to tell you. If you want to see the conflicts, you can see them all right here. But don't worry about it. It's okay. And click close. When you come over to plugins, you can see now the unofficial Fallout 3 patcher is right there at the bottom. All right, so that's all you need to do. So you've got all those bug fixes now done. We're going to move, minimize this down, go back to the internet, and move on to the next thing. It's the Fallout Stutter Remover. Fallout Stutter Remover basically is going to make your game run more smoothly without those micro stutters and momentary pauses that Bethesda games are plagued with. There are various versions for the Stutter Remover, both for Fallout New Vegas and for Fallout 3. This one's done by Sky Ranger. It is mod 8886. It's been around a long time. And you can read all this stuff. And there is a ton of stuff that most of us will never, ever use. So we'll go over the, you know, the main highlights of this. But basically, just know that it's going to do a lot. And we'll, you're just never going to use all of it. You just aren't. Okay. So go to your files. And you're going to see FSR407. That was done in 2010. The newest version is May 24th, 2014. I want you to go ahead and click that with Manager. We're going to minimize this down. Open up Model Organizer again. And you see I have it right here, 4136, all ready to go. You're going to double click to install. And you're going to be presented with this window. Now you'll have two things in here. SRC is basically the you know, the, the base files. It's going to, you know, have more information that you really need. We don't need the SRC. What we're after is the stuff in the data. Any FOSE, the plugins. What we're going to do is highlight data. You can see a highlighter right there. We're going to right click and say data directory. It's going to include FOSE. That's what we want. Plugins. And then instead of remover, DLL and the .any. .any is very important to have. Don't let, don't let that uh, get deleted accidentally. Okay, it now looks good. Click to install. You can see Fallout Stutter Remover is now over here. Go ahead and activate it, and I'm going to move it above one tweak. All right, no conflicts because it's basically a FOSE plugins program. Now, here's where we come into the changes that we need to make in the .any. I want you to double click on it. And you'll find basically it has any file, no conflicts, no categories, nexus info, blah, 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 blah. We don't care. What we're after is FOSE plugins.any. This is the any file that's for the setter removal. So I want you to click it and you present it with the any itself. Just like we edited the any files for Fallout itself, we can now edit the any files inside Mod Organizer for Fallout setter remover. So there's going to be a couple things we want to change in this. And I've got my handy dandy little notepad right here. See it? And you'll find a bunch of different things here. Now, the first thing we're going to talk about is the FPS manager. If you want Fallout Stutter Remover to manage your frames per second, you want this set at 1. If you have something else that limits your frames per second, you probably don't need this, but I like having it. I think it works very, very well. And we're going to set it at 1. And then we come down and we can, looking at FPS Manager, you will have a couple different things. Now, Kelmich, when you scroll down to Stutter Remover, there it is, Stutter Remover right there, it gives you all the information. This is where a guide like Kelmich is very effective and gives you tons of information. He'll tell you how to install it. He's going to tell you how to right click directory and set data directory just like we did. And he's going to give you suggestions on how to set up the any file to make it run better. But there's a ton of information here that may not be very useful for the beginning modder. But know what you're doing on that, especially when you start getting down to heap section. This is a heap replacement. Unless you know what you're doing, don't touch this. But you can go ahead and read all these suggestions here. I'm just going to cover the main highlights. 
regarding FPS management. We'll minimize that back down. So, FPS management, we set it to 1. Remember up here, set it to 1. So, FPS management is going to be active. There's a couple things we want to do. Now, Kalmich suggests B inject FPS clamp equals 0. We want that to be active. Kalmich suggests putting 1. Maximum FPS 0. This is not what you think it is. 0 means it is not limited in any way by frames per second. So, it's going to go as fast as your processor or your GPU will allow. I prefer having it set at 60. That's the refresh rate on my monitor. Now, if you have a faster refresh rate, you can go ahead and move it up to 120, but if you are already familiar with Bethesda games, bad things happen when you go over 60 frames per second. Kalman suggests you set it at 60. I'm going to leave it at 60. Just from experience, I know it works very well. All right Now, minimum FPS, this is the rate that the game will run at the bare minimum. You know, the FPS manager will run at. It's set default at 30, or at 15, excuse me. We're going to set it at 30 per Kalmich's suggestion. And then finally, the IFPS report right here. It's set at 15,000. Kalmich suggests 4,000. I trust his judgment. I don't know exactly what that does, but we're just going to let it go. So now we're done. There is one more thing I'm from personal experience that I'm going to talk about, and that's the B hook like critical sections right here. It equals 1. From Fallout New Vegas, we have a few problems with this line. It suggests to be set as 1, so it's active, and it's down here. Just, just trust that it makes these changes. But for Fallout New Vegas users, it was better at 0. So I want you to just keep that in mind. If you're having additional little you know, stutters or pauses, you may want to come back in and change B light hook critical sections equals zero instead of one. I'm going to leave it at one until I know what my game does. Right? If it doesn't have any stutters, I may just go ahead and leave it at one. If I find it has additional stutters or pauses, I'll go ahead and come back in and change it to one or zero rather and see what it does. Now that all those changes are done in there, we're going to click save. Now it's saved all the changes in the Fallout Cell Remover.any file so that it will be applied to Mod Organizer whenever we run it with FFSE. Right? So, moving back on, we got one more to do, and that is the New Vegas Anti Crash. Now you may be saying New Vegas Anti Crash, but we're modding for Fallout 3. Well, it will still work for Fallout 3 as long as we make a minor change. And this is done by Q, Q U E U E. And it's the Nexus Mods New Vegas Mods 53635. And I just, just know that you'll be going to the New Vegas site. Don't worry about that too much. Just go and get it. So you can read what all this does, but basically it adds a bunch of little fixes so it doesn't crash as much. All right, I use it for uh, Fallout New Vegas. It works very well. But we're going to make it work for Fallout 3. I want you to go to Files. And you're going to see the New Vegas Anti-Crash. Don't do any of this. Just ignore it. Right? But since we're downloading it to Mod Organizer for Fallout 3, and I also have Fallout New Vegas for Mod Organizer, it's not going to, it's going to associate the, the Nexus links with that other mod manager. So what we're going to do is download this manual. Okay, just download it manually to your desktop or wherever you keep your downloads. And you can see I have it right here. Now, just like we did with some of the other programs, to insert them into the downloads, we need to go through and find our downloads. And you know, just a reminder, you know, if you ever want to see where your downloads are, you can go to... Ooh. Oh, that was loud. So you can go to your download directory right here. Okay, whatever it says right here is where your downloads are kept. Mine are kept on the jump drive. We know that. Cancel. Okay. So, we're going to go to our download directory where we keep all my downloads. And you can see it right here. I have This is where I keep all my Fallout 3 downloads. Open that up. Now you see we have some additional stuff. We have Fallout Star Remover and the unofficial patch to go with one tweak. So, what we're going to do, whoop, there it is. I'm just going to grab this off my desktop and drop it in there. 
Let me throw that away. We have a copy in downloads. So we can go back over to downloads. New Vegas anti-crash. It's not going to want to query this information correctly because this is fall 3, not fall New Vegas. Just trust me on this, guys, okay? So I want you to go ahead and double-click to install. And it automatically installed it. It didn't even give you a manual thing. Go ahead and activate it. I would move it up top right here above one week. And what you're going to do is double-click it. And I want you to go over to the file tree at the far end. And you're going to see NVSE and the meta.ini. To highlight it, right click it, rename. And we're going to name it F, oops, excuse me, F O S E. Just like that. Now, it'll have plugins and the New Vegas Anti Crash.dll. Right, simple as that. So that when this program runs, the unofficial patch, then it's going to run server mover, then it's going to run anti crash. It will now make changes to FOSE. As simple as that, even though it's New Vegas anti crash and you could change it, you know, rename it, I guess. Rename the mod to something else, but that, you know, just leave it like that. All right. So that now when you run your, your game, and we'll just do a test to see if it all runs. It should work. So, here we are finally in the game. In this episode, we basically fixed the vanilla version of Fallout 3. But there is so much more that we can mod, and we will do that in further episodes. Until then, you can play the game free of most problems. In Episode 3, we will be installing the tools needed to successfully mod Fallout 3. I hope you'll join me for that. My name is Cal, I'm from Dirty Weasel, and I'm signing off! <laughs>